Hi there, Mr. Holcomb here with another episode of The Bath Behind the Modules. This is Lesson 12, Applying Probability to Make Informed Decisions. So the classwork example one, number Q, goes as this. Your teacher gives you a number Q with numbers one through six on its face. If you've never seen this particular cube before, you are asked to state a theoretical probability model for rolling it once. A probability model consists of the list of possible outcomes, which is called the sample space, and the theoretical probabilities associated with each of the outcomes. You say that the probability model might assign the probability of one-sixth to each of the possible outcomes, but because you have never seen this particular cube before, you would like to roll it to use Maybe it is a trick cube, or a or loaded dice, as they call it. Suppose I allow you to roll it 500 times, and you get the following results. So this bottom row should equal the total of 500. So the probability of getting the outcome frequency was 77 out of 500, and so on and so on and so on. Exercise 1 says... <clears throat> If the equally likely model was correct about how many of each outcome you expect to see if the cube is rolled 500 times. So what you do is you take the number of times you roll it, divide it by the possible outcomes, which there are six, and six goes into 50, um, eight times. Six times eight is 48. Subtract and you get 20. Six times three is 18, and you get 20. So it's 83.3 repeating. So I would say about 83. About how many of each outcome to expect? About 83. Two, based on the data from the 500 rolls, how often were odd numbers observed? And how often were they? So odd numbers were observed. Just make it from this now. Odd numbers were observed 77 times, 75 times, 76 times. So 77 plus 75 plus 76 is 228, I think. Okay, so odd numbers occurred 288 times. Okay, how often were even numbers observed? Well, the even numbers would be 92 plus 90 plus 90. Which is 272. I should say four odd. Okay. And then let's see that. Is that right? Nine times three is 270. Plus two is 272. Okay. Oh, I wrote 288. It's 228. Okay, the reason I was pausing there was I always make sure my answer makes sense. And the reason I was delaying there is because those did not add up to 500. If I do this, they do. Okay, that's better. Because it's got to total 500. Okay, example two. Two black balls and two white balls are put in a small cup whose bottom allows the four balls to fit snug. After shaking the cup well, two patterns of colors are possible as shown. The pattern on the left shows the similar colors are opposite each other, and the pattern on the right shows them similar, the similar colors are next to two or adjacent to each other. Felipe is asking to specify a probability model for the change, chance experiment of shaking the cup and observing the pattern. He thinks that because there are two outcomes, like heads and tails on a coin, that the outcome should be equally likely. Sylvia isn't so sure that the equally likely model is correct, so she would like to collect some data before deciding on the model. So exercise three says that collect data for Sylvia. Carry out the experiment of shaking a cup that contains four balls, two black and two white, observing and recording whether the pattern is opposite or adjacent. Repeat this process twenty times. Then combine the data with those collected by your model. Okay, so I'm going to do it differently. Since I do not have a cup with four balls, I'm going to use 
a random number generator. Okay, so let me get that and I'll bring it up just for a moment. Okay, so I press the math button and over to probability and I'm looking for random for random integer five. So it's one comma two. Okay, so I want to choose random integers that include one and two. And I'm going to get random numbers, either one or two. So I could do it this way and say, let one be opposite and let two be adjacent or next to each other. And then I want to do this 20 times. So there's my first one. I got adjacent. And now I just hit enter again, opposite. And I'll do five at a time. So there's five. Three twos and a one. Twice. So one occurred twice. Two occurred three times. I'll just tally marks. And I'm going to do it five more times. One, two, three, four, five. Coming here on the screen now. Seven. Okay, so I'm just going to count the bottom five then because I don't want to count things twice. So two, a one, a one, a two, two. Okay, so those are the last five, three twos and two ones. So it's two to three again. Okay, and now five more times. One, two, three, four, five, and count the last five. And then again, there were three twos, two, two, and two, and a one and a one. So it's going to be one and a one and one, two, three, twos. And then finally five more times will get us to two. One, two, three, four, five. And we have three ones and two twos this time. So one, two, three, one, two. So we ended up with 14 across from each other and 16 adjacent. Okay, so she thinks that they're going to be equally likely. Well, we were really close. 14 and 16. 14 out of 20. Or not 14. I have the wrong totals here. I'm counting those as 10s. Okay, so our results were 5 and 4 is 9 and 11. So 9 out of 20 and 11 out of 20 is pretty close. It's 45 and 55%. It's 10 to 50 50. So it's really close. So it says Do your results agree with Felipe's equally likely model? Or do they indicate that Sylvia has the right idea? So she carried out their experiment to observe see if there's a pattern or opposites or seeing if there's a pattern to the opposite or adjacent. All right. Okay. So since we didn't get 50-50 here, then I personally would agree with Sylvia. Let's do some experiments because it might not be 50 50. There might be some reason they land the way they do. Okay. Exercise four and five. There are three prop popular brands of mixed nuts. Your teacher loves cashews, and in his experience of having purchased these brands, he suggests that not all brands have the same percentage of cashews. One has around 20%, one has 25%, and one has 35%. So let's just say I had bags labeled A, B, and C representing three brands. The bags contain red beads representing cashews, brown beads representing the other types of nuts. One bag would have 20% red, another 25, and a third 35, just like the real possible, the real assumption. So you're to determine which bag contains which percentage of cashews. You cannot just open the bag and count the beads. So it says work as a class to design a simulation. And you need to agree on what an outcome is, what a trial is, and what a success is, and how to calculate the estimated probability of getting cash changed based on your estimates on 50 trials. Okay, so after doing this, we should have come up with, for starters, we have to know what an outcome is. In this case, it is the result of choosing one bead from a given bag. Okay, it's either red or it's brown. That is the outcome. A red bead represents a cash change. A brown bead represents a non-cashew. In this problem, a trial consists of one outcome. So a trial would just be drawing one bead. 
A success is observing a red Beads are replaced between trials. 50 trials are to be done. The estimated probability of selecting a cashew from the given bag is the number of successes divided by 50 total number of beads. Okay. Now it says your teacher will give you a group of group one of the your teacher will give your group one of the bags labeled A, B, or C. Using your plan from part A, collect your data. Do you think you have the 20, 25, or 35 percent cash? <laughs> okay. So here it says once estimates have been computed, you should have the class try to decide which percentage is in which bag. Agreeing on the 35 percent bag may be the easiest, but there could be disagreement concerning the 20 percent and 25 percent because they're so close. If they cannot decide, ask them what they should do. So you might be indecisive is what this is saying if you're between 20 and 25 percent. But a 35 percent bag, that's the easiest one because it's, it's occurring more frequently and it's 10 percent away from 50 percent away from the other two perspective. Okay, so hopefully they say that they need more data. If they can't decide. So about 500 data points in a sim simulation yields estimated probabilities fairly close to the theoretical one. In other words, the more you the more trials you attempt, the closer you're going to get to the theoretical All right, exercise six. Suppose you have two bags, A and B, in which there are an equal number of slips of paper. The positive numbers are written on the slips. The numbers are not known, but they are whole numbers between 1 and 75 inclusive. The same number may occur on more than one slip of paper. So the word inclusive means that 1 and 75 will be there. Because we only said between 1 and 75, we were talking about 2 through 74. Because to be between, we don't include the endpoints, but this one is inclusive. So we're going to use 1, and we're going to use 75. These bags are used to play a game. In this game, you choose one of the bags, and then choose one slip from that bag. If you choose bag A, and the number you chose from it is a prime number. If you choose bag B and the number you choose from it is a power of two, you win. Which bags which bag should you choose? So six says Emma suggests that it does not matter which bag you choose because you do not know anything about what numbers are inside the bags. So she thinks that you are equally likely to win with either bag. Do you agree with her? Explain. Okay, so without any data, Emma is right. You may as well toss a coin to determine which bag to choose. However, gathering information through empirical evidence helps in making an informed decision. Okay, number seven. Amir suggests that he would like to collect some data from both bags before making a decision about whether or not the model is equally likely. Help Amir by drawing 50 slips from each bag, being sure to replace each one before choosing again. Each time you draw a slip, record whether it would have been a winner or not. Using the results, what is your estimate for the probability of drawing a prime number from bag A and drawing a power of two from bag B? Okay, so in this situation, without actually doing it, I don't have any information to share with you. So you would actually have to have these two bags, have to have 50 slips from each bag. Or actually, you have to draw. 50 times from each bag with replacement and the bags need to have values of 1 through 75 inclusive but it did not say there couldn't be any repetitions and it does not say we could not skip any commit any so I could have manipulated either bag any way I wanted to to make one much more probable than the other. Okay so once doing this and you were to play the game which bag would you choose and explain why you would choose this bag. If you got through this and you determined that one came out a lot more than the other, then that would be your reasoning, okay? So without doing the actual experiment, there is no data to break. Okay, so that is the end of lesson 12. Go to your